This year's AP Calculus exam is in just over a month, which means high school students all over the country are watching my 10 hours of AP Calculus free response questions to fall asleep to video. And with the exam coming up, it got me thinking about free response question one from last year, which was a very controversial problem due to the wording in part D. When I posted my video solving all the free response questions from that exam, many people took issue with my solution to part D, and there was a lot of discourse online about this problem. Of course, now the official solution and scoring guidelines have been released, and so we can discuss the problem knowing the official solution, which agreed with the solution I provided. We're not going to solve the entirety of question one, because like I said, I have a video doing that already, but let's take a look at problem D, what makes it tricky and easy to misinterpret, and what you would actually need to do to earn the full point for problem D. The context for this problem is that it's given us some temperature readings for coffee in a cup over a handful of minutes. We can see that the temperature is decreasing. Some of the earlier parts of the problem ask us to approximate how fast the temperature is changing. They ask us to approximate what the temperature actually is at a time that's not provided. And we do an exact calculation of temperature at a given time using the derivative of the temperature function. But in part D, we are given a second derivative. It says for the model defined in part C, that is this derivative which was given, it can be shown that the second derivative, the derivative of the derivative, is equal to this for t between 12 and 20. We're then asked to determine whether the temperature of the coffee is changing at a decreasing rate or at an increasing rate and to give a reason for our answer. So first, here's one simple way that some people misread this question. Understand in the previous part that's referenced, part C, we were already given the derivative of the temperature function. The derivative, roughly speaking, tells us the rate of change of the temperature of the coffee at a particular time. So some students saw that this says determine whether the temperature of the coffee is changing at a decreasing increasing rate or at an increasing rate and just look back at that first derivative that was provided because this tells us how the temperature is changing. In fact, if you misread the question in this way, then you don't even have to reference this given derivative because the problem tells us at the start that the temperature is decreasing. So some students said since the temperature is decreasing, well, the temperature of the coffee is changing at a decreasing rate. The issue with that interpretation is that in part D, there are in fact two rates of change which have been bundled into a very small amount of language. The temperature of the coffee changing is described by the derivative, but we are asked about the rate of that change, and the rate of change of the derivative is exactly what the second derivative is, and of course that's why it's provided for us. Now hopefully any calculus student would be able to find this second derivative on their own, but sometimes just in the interest of your time, the writers of the questions will provide it for you. Now the mistake I just described is a simple and silly mistake. The mistake that upset more students concerns potential ambiguity in the wording of this question. So let's look at that mistake that more people made and that frustrated quite a few test takers. Before we look at that mistake, this video is brought to you by MathShin.com, my brand new math fashion brand. These are the pigeonhole principle boxer briefs available now. The design features seven pigeons, Leonard Euler, Carl Gauss, Euclid of Alexandria, Pierre de Fermat, and the Bernoulli's. If underpants aren't your thing, you can get a variety of other products with this design as well as three other awesome designs on MathShin.com right now. Check it out and pick up something you like. So this question was part of the graphing calculator section. Thus, what many students did was graph the second derivative, which is a good idea. And here's what you would see if you graphed the second derivative. The second derivative is in red. You can see that here. I've also graphed the first derivative in blue, and this orange band just shows t between 12 and 20, which is the interval of focus for this question. The two things you should know 
notice from this graph are that the second derivative, which again is in red, is positive. We see it here above zero. And the first derivative, which again is in blue, is negative. We see it here below zero. Oftentimes, sketching out a number line is helpful in interpreting these pieces of information. Here's a number line with zero on it. We know from the graph that over the interval of interest, the first derivative is negative. So it's somewhere over here to the left of zero. Meanwhile, the second derivative is somewhere over here. It's positive. It's to the right of zero. And the second derivative describes how the first derivative is changing. This means that even though the first derivative is negative, the second derivative is pulling it towards zero because the second derivative is positive. And thus, many students reasoned that the temperature of the coffee is changing at a decreasing rate. And that's because this C prime that describes the rate of change of the temperature of the coffee, those changes are getting smaller because C prime is getting closer to zero. It's being pulled in that direction because C double prime is positive. If the changes in temperature are becoming smaller, you can see why someone would say that the temperature of the coffee is changing at a decreasing rate. However, this is not the correct solution. Really, interpreting it this way, I think, is a result of a little bit of overthinking. The rate of change of the temperature is C prime. And the rate of change of that, which is what we're asked about, is C double prime. C double prime is positive. This means that C prime is increasing, and thus the temperature of the coffee is changing at an increasing rate. It's true, of course, that C prime is getting closer to zero. Its magnitude is actually decreasing because it's negative and approaching zero. But the number itself, C prime, is increasing. It's moving to the right of the number line. That means it's going up. The question doesn't ask us about the magnitude of the changes. Is it changing more drastically or less drastically? It just asks us to determine whether the temperature of the coffee is changing at a decreasing rate or an increasing rate. This can only be answered by appealing to the sign of the second derivative. Because the second derivative is positive over the interval of interest, which you would see when you graph the functions, that means that the derivative is increasing, and so indeed the temperature is changing at an increasing rate. The rate is going from negative to less negative. The sort of logic that many students falsely apply to this problem is the type of reasoning that you do need to use in calculus sometimes, for example, when you have velocity and acceleration of a particle, you might have to compare their signs to each other to determine if a particle's speeding up or not. But speeding up is a magnitude thing. That's the magnitude of velocity. Here, we're not talking about magnitudes. We're just talking about increasing or decreasing rate of change. So I understand why students would misinterpret this, but I don't think it's a bad question. I don't think it's poorly worded. Let's take a quick look at the college board's officially released scoring notes to see what someone would have to do to earn the full point for part D. You can see their model solution here. Because the second derivative is positive on the interval from 12 to 20, the rate of change in the temperature of the coffee, C prime, is increasing on this interval. The scoring notes make it clear that the answer must reference the sign of the second derivative of C. That's what's important here, because that's what describes if the rate of change of temperature is increasing or decreasing. Because the question is about the whole interval, they mentioned that a response that provides a reason based on the evaluation of the second derivative only at a single point does not earn a point for their response. Because the question's about the whole interval. You can't just look at a single point to answer a question about an interval. Additionally, a response that uses ambiguous pronouns such as it is positive, so increasing, would not earn a point either. Because we don't know what it is. Is it the first derivative, the original function, the second derivative, you're not making your reasoning clear if you use an unclear pronoun. And interestingly, even though you can't base your reason on a single point, you don't have to reference the interval from 12 to 20 to earn the point for the question. You just can't use the evaluation of a single point to justify your answer. I suppose the reasoning there is that if you don't reference an interval, well, it's clear we're talking about this one, the interval that was introduced in the question. However, if you 
you base your answer on the evaluation of a single point, that is simply a logical error. So yeah, interesting stuff. I know some people submitted complaints about this question, but the college board stood by their grading, and I agree with it, though again, I understand how easy it could be to make that mistake on this problem. Suffice to say, it's a good problem to look through to get prepared for that AP Calc exam in just a few weeks now. Let me know in the comments if you had any questions, and again, if you're getting ready for the exam, I cannot recommend anything more than my 10 hour long FRQ video, linked in the description. Check out MathShin.com for the coolest math clothes ever created, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and unsort the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal. Wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you so, so.